Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, I am going to show you how easy it is to build your own content-based image retrieval system. Sounds too fancy, but all I'm trying to say is you have an image uh, and you have a directory of a thousands of images and you want to build a search engine that basically goes through all the images in your directory that matches the one that you just provided. So it's basically image-based search, but we are not just searching images. There need to be some data that you go through to search for, right? So we are going to look at how you can uh, build your own system. Pretty simple, few lines of code. I'll show you four different ways of actually doing it. Well, it's one way of doing it, but then like we are going to use multiple feature extractors just, to, just for the fun of it. So obviously as part of this lecture, you will learn a bit about the importance of features, importance of rich features. So whenever we talk about, oh, regular machine learning will do the job it does the job as long as you know what feature extractors or what features are important uh, and if you don't know what features are important deep learning can be the best way to go because deep learning learns what what features are important you don't have to engineer those so we'll learn those along the way I try not to make this a very long video because the topic is pretty straightforward if you want to be updated on future such videos again I request you to hit the subscribe button down below and if you feel extra generous do not forget to hit the thanks button with that information let's go ahead and jump in and as I already mentioned, we are going to extract some features from your query image and all the images in the database. So we're going to create some sort of a database from all the features that we extract. And how do you compare these two feature vectors? Yeah, we are going to vectorize. We are going to have one dimensional vector uh, that summarizes the features. And how are you going to com uh, compare those two vectors? There are quite a few ways, but in this exercise, I'm just going to use uh, the most simple approach which is the cosine similarity you have vector a vector b how do you get the cosine similarity so you quantify the similarity somehow right so this is the equation go through the wikipedia page i'll try to leave the link uh, under the description for this wikipedia page and you can learn more about it what the cosine similarity basically means but this is it this is this is the method we are going to use to assess the similarity between the two vectors yeah okay now let me open spider ide and also show you what uh, i have like the the folder structure here so let me go to large icon so you can see things a bit more clear so i have all images again in my case i don't have thousands of images i just downloaded these from google search and uh, i got bored after downloading 13 images but this should do the job yeah obviously it may it, it helps if you have a whole bunch of images as part of uh, your data database or data set and i have uh, uh, three histopathology images in fact i should have had more microscopy images but i just threw a whole bunch of random images so these are the the microscopy images and i have uh, dogs like chihuahua is that the only one yeah irish terrier right there so i have a couple of dogs and i have a couple of horses right there and i have a couple of monkeys and a couple of tigers and zebras yeah so this is uh, just a mixture and uh, my query images are in here i downloaded another histo image uh, from my quick google search and i downloaded another monkey image and tiger image yeah so with this information okay now let's go in and i am going to show you uh, three different basically three different ways uh, which is one is let's use our own custom features meaning we are going to say hey these are the features and extract the features and then uh, and then create a vector of those and compare and I am also going to show you like how you can do it using VGG 16 free train network free trained on ImageNet and uh, also on ResNet and I don't anticipate much of a difference between uh, the results when it comes to VGG 16 and ResNet because whenever you talk about deep learning pre-trained on ImageNet for example the, the features are very rich they are trained to understand the texture and all all the uh, and, and they're good at capturing all the information custom features we'll see how good we get with these and uh, I'll share all of the code along with readme which kind of summarizes I guess the, the, the environment that I have uh, I'm working on right now okay anything else yeah. Uh, yeah let's jump in let's jump in and we'll talk as we go along so <clears throat> again I added relevant text right there but the first thing that we need to do is 
extract the features and save it as a uh, in a database yeah i'm going to save it in uh, a hdf5 file so step number one how do we extract the features and what do we mean by features and i hope you know what features mean features is you have an image and you have uh, alternate representation of this image and in each representation it highlights a specific type uh, or specific uh, entity in the in the image for example you can actually look at uh, <clears throat> Uh, in this example, I'm going to look at like uh, the color space. I'm also going to look at uh, uh, edge detection. For example, I apply Sobel uh, edge detector and then you apply on the image. Then you have like an edge detected image and then just take the, take the mean value or the standard deviation value. And that is a value that represents your image. So I apply a few such uh, such filters, but let's go through the code. Uh, all of this, it's, it's pretty straightforward. No tricky libraries here, NumPy, scikit image, and OpenCV. So let's go ahead and run these lines. And I am going to use a, one of the image filters that I'm going to use is entropy filter. Entropy, if you know from physics, it tells you the amount of disorder. So if the pixels uh, in your image, there is a lot of texture, then the entropy would be high. If the regions are smooth, the entropy would be low, right? So I'm gonna use that as one of the feature extractors. And uh, I also use, uh, I think, uh, yeah, Roberts and Sobel to extract like the edges and a couple others. So let us run these lines right there. And then before running the function, so I created a function right here to extract the custom features. Now, first, uh, Color information is very important <clears throat> in these images, right? So color, for example, if I go back and if I look at uh, if I look at these images, they're all pinkish. So even just by looking at the color, I can say, hey, these are similar images, all right? So color information can be important. So that's why I converted my RGB image into a lab space image. L is just the uh, grayscale type of grayscale type of image, right? And A and B represent the two uh, types of colors that uh, color channels in your image so I just took a image and averaged it just the average colors when it uh, comes to the a space same thing with the B average colors again it's up to you what features you want to define I just included a few of these and you can include more and uh, so these are the two features I want to be in, uh, including as part of my feature vector so the first two numbers in my vector and then I apply <clears throat> excuse me, and then I convert my RGB image into a grayscale image because most of these operators work on grayscale image. So I converted that to grayscale and back to like a 8-bit uh, uh, image because most of these filters are designed to work on 8-bit image, yeah? So that's what I did there. And then the first, uh, the first feature is entropy, like I already mentioned. So I'm extracting the entropy uh, image and then uh, I, I just take uh, uh, the mean and standard deviation. These are two, uh, these are two features that are going into my feature vector. Yeah, mean in fact by how much they're varying and uh, the mean value right there. And then I apply the edge detection filters, Roberts and Sobel, and I'm just taking the mean value. You can also add the standard deviation if you want. Uh, I just added this. And I did three kernels. In fact, you can automate this. I did a video on this topic a long time ago about Gabor kernel which is a convolutional kernel where you have the kernel size, sigma, and uh, and you have the gamma and all of that. So by defining, by changing this, you're changing the digital filter itself. And I actually created three variations of this and all the outputs, I am just taking the mean of these outputs and then they also act as uh, another entries to my feature vector. And I'm building a feature vector. This is as basic as it gets, right? And I built a custom uh, features uh, list or an array of my a b entropy mean entropy standard all of this i just captured them as an numpy array and that's what the function is returning yeah that's it and now how do we build a uh, database from all these images now comes walking through each image so i am reading each image and extracting the features right so when I run that, I get my custom features and I am going to add that to my features list. And for each of these images, I'm going to also capture the name because when you perform the search, you should say, uh, you know, hey, this is the, these are the top three matches and the name should be returned, right? So that's the reason why we have both features and names captured. And I'm going to convert them into NumPy array 
and I'm going to save it into a custom features.h5, which is a HDF5 file with one, uh, two data sets inside, inside the HDF5 file, and one being the features, the other one being the names. That's it. <clears throat> Obviously, you know what I'm going to do when I go to the query part, which is uh, open this features, custom features.h5, and then compare my features that I extract from future image with against the features right there, and then sort them based on, okay, what are the top three, top five, and give me the names of those. That's what I'm going to do uh, in the next file. But let's go ahead and run these, uh, and let's see, make sure we have, uh, yeah, we don't have any h5 right there. I think I'm just storing to the root directory right there. Yeah. So let's run it. <clears throat> It should go through all my images, my image, uh, some random names. They are like, some of them are PNG, some of them are JPEG. And I'm converting all those images into, oh, I'm not even, uh, yeah, I am resizing at least uh, in this case, the gray image to 256 by 256. I should have done that with this, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, but eventually now I have uh, uh, feature vectors stored. Okay. <clears throat> Now going to query using custom features. Now I want to use that search through the feature space for a match. And uh, for that, obviously, I need to open the HDF5 file, the same file where we stored our features, and then extract my features and image names. In the previous screen, we stored them. Now we are reading them. That's it. And then I'm opening my query image. Let's say I have, a, what query images do I have? I have, let's start with the histo and then let's do tiger and then we can also try monkey uh, and, and search and see how good the quality of our results are. Okay, so when I extract the query image, which is histo image in this case, it is going to load the image and now I need to extract the features. So for that, I am going to extract my features right here. And, uh, and, and once the features are extracted, you see, once the features are extracted, fe features.shape0 is basically giving me the, the data set right there, uh, the features itself. <clears throat> And I'm going to convert that into a score. And again, I talked about the cosine distance. So that's my score. And I'm going to capture the scores for each image uh, uh, in, in, uh, you know, in, in my features right there. And then I am going to look at my scores and rank ID. Basically, the rank ID is, okay, go ahead and sort my features based on you know largest to smallest and then give me the top three. That's what I'm printing out down here. Give me the top three images from that specific list along with the names. I hope that makes sense. So let's go ahead and run this. <clears throat> so it should be pretty fast. Now you can see clearly my uh, reference image, query image is histo.jpg. My query image is histo.jpg. And it tells me the top three images in order are four, one, and two.png. Why did it say? Again, if I go to features, you should see these are all the features I have. Okay, so these are all the features. For each image, uh, I have all of these features. And from this specific image, it's going to calculate, uh, I think I called it X, I should have named it better. These are the features coming from this specific image. Now the cosine comparison is going to be done between this, you see how I have nine of these, against this right there. I have nine of these right there. And I have 13 images. If you have 10,000 images, you have 10,000 of those here, that's it. You need to build this once, but then every time you do the query, it's pretty fast. I mean, it's just looking at numbers and it should be pretty fast. Okay. So it says uh, the best matches are 4.png, 1.png, and 2.png. So if I open this, so histo image looks like this. And when I open all images, it says this is the first best match and then comes one, and then comes two, and then comes this, and then comes this. Okay, I'm good with this, right? I mean, these are the three images that look similar to my query image. Now let's do tiger. This is a bit more challenging. There is not much color. This color kind of overlaps with a few others, like right there. I mean, this image can be a match, that image can be a match, I don't know. But let's see how good our, <clears throat> our algorithm performs. So uh, it's called tiger3. Our JPEG. Let's run this one more time. Okay, now it says the best matches are Tiger1.jpg. Great. Actually, that's, I'm surprised. It actually did a pretty good job. Let me minimize this a little bit. All images. So my Tiger image that I just supplied matches the Tiger1.jpg right there. 
and monkey1.jpg wherever that thing is this i have no clue why it's matching right so if this doesn't look anywhere like tiger <clears throat> and tiger2.jpg obviously tiger1 tiger so it actually did a good job and for the third one it picked the monkey1.jpg <coughs> okay um let's go ahead and do another exercise so there is another one called uh, monkey3.jpg i haven't tested this yet so let's go ahead and do that monkey Okay, let's run this and see what type of matches it gives. So, <coughs> oh, this is actually doing better than I thought it would. So I supplied this image as the input, monkey3.jpg, and it tells me the best matches are monkey1.jpg, monkey2.jpg, and zebra1, zebra1. Again, no clue why that should be a match. In fact, if, I, if you ask me, I would give maybe one of these as matches, but that's okay. Excuse me, you see the limitation right there. So with that information, we just realized, I mean, we just figured out how to extract features and how to do the match. Let me close these two files. Again, I'm going to share them with you, so don't worry about it. And now let's look at better features. How do you get better features? Well, if you are great at figuring out, okay, these are the ones that work, then you can engineer your features. But again, VGG16, <coughs> the one that has been trained on millions of images like on ImageNet dataset already there so why not just go ahead and use it so let's delete everything and do vgg16 and see how that compares against our custom features so hopefully you know what vgg16 is but let's first import the required libraries <coughs> my throat is getting dry i probably need some water but let's finish this first okay so uh you need to understand uh, you know, how the model looks like. So let's go ahead and before we add everything into a function, into a class, let's actually see, understand what VGG16 uh, looks like. So I'm defining my model as VGG16 that I got from tensorflow.caras.applications and uh, the weights are image net weights. We need those, we need pre-trained weights. Otherwise uh, it just loads uh, all the kernels with random weights and that doesn't work. Those are not rich features for us. Yeah, the rich features are the ones that are after the training on ImageNet dataset. The, the, the model has the right weights for you. Yeah, so you need that. <clears throat> and VGG16 input shape is 224 by 224 by three. That's how uh, the pre-trained weights are. Uh, uh, we can, of course you can change different sizes. That's a different discussion. In fact, I made a video on it. What, basically, what if you wanna use a pre-trained model on uh, images of different size, right? So anyway, go ahead and check that out on my channel. But in this case, it doesn't matter. We are going to resize our images to 224 by 224 by three. We're going to use max pooling and let's not include the top, which is the final layers uh, of uh, the classification layers. So how does the model look like if that is the case? Okay, so you see here, my input is 224 by 224 by three. It goes through all these convolutions. And finally, the output is global max pooling and we will get a vector of size 512. In our case, we got a vector of nine when we, when we pre-trained a nine or 10 when we used our own features. In this case, there are 512 features that we are actually getting. And these are all amazing, rich features. I hope that helps. So with that information, so we know that our vector size should be 512. So let us go ahead and uh, comment out this part and go through uh the the extractor so this is basically my vgg feature extractor in this class vgg net i defined a vgg net class and within that we have extract feature so basically when we are going to index later on we are just going to import our vgg net and from vgg net we are going to just call the extract features method that's it and this is very this is basically the same as what we just saw input shape my weight, my pooling, and VGG16 is defined right there. And down here, we are actually defining the function or, or the method that we are going to call later on. And the method, I included the reading the images part so we don't have to take care of uh, pre-processing the image uh, when we are indexing it. So it's going to load the image, it's going to convert that into an array, expand the dimensions, and then does model dot uh, preprocess it, model dot predict, <coughs> and then the normalized features are returned. Okay, nothing, nothing to do here. Let's jump into our index using this 
feature extractor. Previously, we created our own feature extractor. Now we are using VGG16. The file should look identical to the one I showed you earlier where we did custom features. So first thing first, we are uh, we are uh, loading the images right there and we are doing model.extract features. Previously, we just did our own features, right? So <clears throat> model.extract features and I'm going to append the features from each image and dump everything into vgg16features.h5 file. So pretty much standard uh, as we did uh, earlier. So it's going to go through all the images and now comes the time to query it. So the, the H5 file is stored, VGG16 features right there, and now we need to query it. And the query also looks identical to the one we saw earlier, except here from VGG extractor, we are importing VGG net, right? So that's what we have. We are importing VGG net from this Python file. <clears throat> and then we are going to open our HDF5 file and then we are going to open our query image. Let's, uh, yeah, let's stick with Tiger 3 because previously when we did Tiger, it did a good job, Tiger 1, Tiger 2, and then it gave us a monkey or something. But let's see what the third image is. I'm curious about the third image here. And I think it should give us zebra because zebra looks more like tiger than a monkey. Yeah, in terms of the stripes and everything. So <clears throat> that's our query image. We'll import our model. And from the model, we have extract features method that we are going to apply, which is basically this section. And it's going to return the normalized features after it's done. And once uh, the features are there, then we are going to calculate the scores by comparing the feature. I mean, our, our extracted features against all the features in the database and uh, rank the score and report the top three. Identical to before, so let's go ahead and run it. This time we got Tiger 2, Tiger 1, and Zebra 2. Zebra 2, Zebra 2. So how does our tiger look like? It's sleeping, it's facing to the right hand side. Okay, now let's come here. So Tiger 2 is the first match. Tiger 2 is facing towards the right hand side. It's not sleeping, it's standing. And Tiger 1 is the next fit. Uh, it's facing to the left hand side, it's striped. And the third one is Zebra 2. Again, it's facing to the right hand side and you have the stripes right there. This is more, th this tells you the importance of features. You know, uh, in VGG16, it's amazing. And let's also look at uh, monkey right there. One more monkey, monkey query images, monkey3.jpg. Let's see, monkey3. Yeah, and let's check it. There you go. Monkey2, monkey1, and chihuahua.jpg is the third image. What's the chihuahua.jpg? Let's see how it looks like. Chihuahua.jpg, yeah. <laughs> so there are uh, certain features right there. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm fine with that, yeah? Now, if you wonder how well it actually works on completely, uh, I don't know, completely new image. So let's do that exercise. Um, let's go to Google and let's do monkey and let's look at images. This is fun exercise. I love to do these things. Uh, which image? I mean, something that doesn't look like our, the monkey that we have. Yeah, let's actually take, uh, let's actually take something. Let's take, uh, let's take this one. We don't have anything that looks like this. So let me open image in new tab. And instead of actually saving it, because I'm mindful of all the, you know, copyrights and all that stuff. Let's just take that, yeah? A capture, save. Let's do monkey4.jpg and let's see how well that works. <clears throat> monkey4.jpg. Okay, so what does it think? Yeah, isn't that great? Monkey2.jpg, monkey1, and chihuahua. So it's, it's giving us consistently good results. And in fact, monkey4.jpg, in fact, if I go back and open query, query, query using custom features, Let's do that. The one we just the one we just created earlier using our own custom features. What happens if I just give monkey four dot jpeg? Is it good enough? <clears throat> Tiger one. Now it's completely falling apart. You see, so I I give a image that looks not like other monkeys. Now this this one custom features is telling me this image is closer to Tiger one, zebra one and zebra two, but it definitely is not. Um, 
why is it doing that so if you look at that it's telling us it's tiger one tiger two and zebra one maybe because it has like some features in the face or something but i have no clue this is why i think custom features is always a bit dangerous unless you know exactly what features work for your application whether it is image based or some other non-image based data got to be mindful of that okay so just for the sake of completeness let me get back here and let me close my vgg and focus a bit on ResNet and end this video. ResNet is very similar, right? I mean, first thing first, ResNet feature, uh, ResNet feature extractor. You can see how the feature extractor uh, looks like. Let's go ahead and uh, run these lines so you can see. <clears throat> of course, I need to import the right libraries. So let's go ahead and do that. And uh, you'll see that the output layer in this case has 2000. In fact, if you put, uh, if you do similar code as BGG 16, and if you say include top equals to false, then it chops it off a bit like right at this stage, like seven by seven by 2048. And then you have to add a, uh, add a, for example, uh, dense layer to convert that into like a vector. Uh, or you can just do what I did. I just added uh, the full, the entire thing, and then I said, okay, go, me, go ahead and give me the average pooling layer, which is, which is right there, average pooling layer, and that is my output, and I, I kind of created the model such a way that it stops right here with 2000, uh, uh, the, the vector of length 2000. Okay, so that's the only thing I have done, but otherwise it is almost identical to VGG 16. Once you define that, you define your network. And uh, let me go ahead and save it. Index using, uh, index using the ResNet model. Everything identical except I changed VGG to ResNet. That's it, no point in even showing any of this to you. Let's run and create a new index with these uh, features. Now I'll have more features. So I guess this should work even better, but more features doesn't necessarily mean better features, right? But uh, it depends on whether ResNet 50 is better than VGG 16. I believe it is, but let's go ahead and do the query on Tiger 3 first. <clears throat> Okay, so the more features a bit slower compared to earlier, right? So Tiger 3 gives me Tiger 2, Tiger 1, and Zebra 1. Great, I'm happy with it. Let's do Monkey 4 just for the sake of completeness. The one we just downloaded. I'm curious if it comes up with all the other monkeys and searching for similar images. Yeah, Monkey 2, Monkey 1, and Chihuahua. Uh, identical result to VGG 16. So there you go. This is how you can build. Obviously, the best way to build this is now you use like PyQt or something to add a little nice interface for uh, to load an image and then it does the search and it probably displays uh, images for you or just gives you the image names or just copies. One uh, other thing that you can do is instead of just displaying the image names, go ahead and uh, copy those images into a different directory. It depends on what you want to do with those images at that point. But I hope you learned how to build your own, uh, your own search engine that's based on images, but more importantly, understand the importance of features when it comes to deep learning and machine learning. Thank you very much. And again, please do not forget to hit the subscribe button.